Hello cave dwellers. The retro road trip format has died a death this year owing to what's been going on in the world. We just haven't been able to get out and about and record them. But that's all changing today because we're going on a virtual retro road trip all the way to Estonia. Yeah, I know nothing about Estonian video game history either, but that all changed when I filmed this and hopefully you'll learn a few things along the way today. Starting with where the hell is Estonia? Well, here's the map. And as you can see, it's just north of Latvia, south of Finland, and the museum that we're going to, Level Up, sits on the north coast of Estonia, just on the Gulf of Finland there. So that's where we're heading today. Because of the nature of the way this was filmed using mobile phones, the quality of the footage does vary a little bit as we go through the video, but hopefully that won't detract from the message and the history lesson, and you'll enjoy it nonetheless. So, don your headsets, and let's go on a virtual retro road trip. This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your Raspberry Pi with our all-in-one arcade kit using genuine Sanwa arcade parts. And OneClickPrint.com for your photos on canvas, acrylic, gifts and more. Local craftsmen and global delivery. Andres, you have a video game museum in Estonia called Level Up. Thank you for accommodating us on this virtual road trip today. I will say up front that my knowledge of Estonian history is not good, but I do want to learn. So I do apologise in advance if I uh, am a bit naive in some of my questions, but hopefully by the end of it, we'll all have learned something new about your country and about your museum. But we will start with a little background about yourself. So tell us about your own history in video games in Estonia. When did you first have a computer uh, and what did you have? Well, yes, um, Estonia has this... Uh quite interesting story, um, history of uh, video games connected with, uh, of course, the fall of the Soviet Union. So um, I was born when the Soviet uh, Union just collapsed. It was uh, uh, 1992. And uh, while growing up, I uh, didn't have big, how to say, diversity of consoles or games. Our market was um, kind of empty. So uh, we never had those uh, original NES consoles or SNES consoles or original Mega Drives. We only had bootlegs from China that came to Russia and from Russia came to Estonia. And uh, they had always uh, really low quality and uh, you never knew what game you would have. So um, my first console, uh, I think uh, I got when I was around eight years old from my uncle. It was a Terminator console. So the name of the console was Terminator. It was black. And uh, there, there was this uh, quite famous cartridge where you have nine, 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 nine games. And in reality, it was like five or six games that just uh, repeat <laughs> constantly in the museum. We collect those because uh, I would say no one else is collecting them. Uh, no. um, I love those because they really have this uh, unique history. So you have this uh, Contra cartridge, 24 in one. And in reality, you never know what you will have. That doesn't mean there is a Contra game inside. No, no, no. Mm -mm. But yeah, mine, I think, looked more like uh, yeah this one. So those uh, that I hold in my hand, they are from uh, 94, I think, 94, 96. And those that you can buy right now from China, those are different. It's not this. It's not the original fake. The original fake. <laughs> <Cartridge. laughs> it's not the original fake cartridge, yes. So what were the what were the most clone systems then? You've mentioned the Nintendo NES. Was that the most popular one? Yeah, but it was not NES. It was a Famicom. A oh, so, Famicom, of course. Uh, yeah. Yes, it was a Famicom. That's why uh, you have this uh, form factor of the mm -hmm. cartridge. It's like a Famicom uh, cartridge. So uh, they took uh, the Japanese uh, console. If you would go to the market, markets outside, yes, they were all full of those consoles, all of them. And they had different pricing. They had different names. Even cartridges were sometimes white, black, uh, different form. But in the end, it was all just a Famiclone console. They yeah. were all the same. Just um, children and parents bought those that had uh, more interesting plastic around. So that was uh, the difference. Yeah, and you, different mentioned, packaging. you mentioned Dendi there. They're quite well known now as a yes. big maker of clones. Now, just to get a bit of context for everyone, am I right in saying that Estonia was under Soviet rule until a revolution around about 1987 started and then independence was gained at about 91? Is that right? Yes. yes. Okay. So that would have meant that there were lots of embargoes that meant tech developed in the West couldn't be exported into the Soviet Union, hence the need for these clones. 
Um, yes. Good, good. Okay. So was access access to the games then, by the sounds of it, for you, was one, two, three, how many sort of years behind the releases in the West do you think you were? A lot, I would a lot. say. A lot. Around, <laughs> around, um, around uh, five till ten years. Five to ten different. years, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh, it's quite interesting topic because before that there was, uh, of course, uh, uh, Soviet Union and Soviet co- uh, consoles. But those Soviet consoles, uh, they were... Um, quite simple so first of those is uh electronic video sport we have it in the museum uh, many different variations it was just a pong clone so it was basic really basic like a pong with uh, different adjustments but still pong and uh, the other one the portables they were clones of game and watch so there was uh, this game uh, mario collects eggs uh, a game and watch uh, mini console uh, handheld and uh in uh, in soviet union we had the uh, wolf that collects eggs okay. so <laughs> soviets they took the best uh, possible um, uh, electronics and they tried to make their own copies sometimes it worked sometimes not really much but they tried and uh, they were building those so uh, i'm a bit young so i cannot say that i was growing with them but of course i saw them when i was growing i saw that there are those uh, electronic uh, consoles mm. and uh, uh, but the market share and popularity of those was not not so big so people do remember them but that doesn't mean that everyone had this uh, console at home so uh, people a bit older than me they said that in those times it was not popular to even play those uh, consoles so uh, popularity of video games came with those dandies so those yellow cartridges uh tank game contra game uh mario the first one uh for many that was the beginning of of uh video game i would say market and history in estonia and in the in post-soviet countries and these came at a these came at an affordable price then did they for people to yes. access these games mm-hmm. yeah yeah quite cheap quite cheap yes and uh uh, well, uh, majority of consoles, uh, as I know uh, through through the stories of people, and uh, I collect as much as possible the the history uh, of Baltic states. Um, uh, they came around uh, 92, 94. So first consoles, first dandies, actively started selling in those years, and uh, it looked uh, the box looked something like this. This is a bit younger model it's uh, it was made just uh, like maybe in 2004 okay. but the thing is that uh, it looked almost the same like nothing changed uh, this was the logo of of this uh, dandy and this was the mascot this um, beautiful elephant and uh, the form factor of the console was uh, the most popular one was like this so this was the most popular right. variation that's very identifiable looks- as a famicom yeah Yes, that's a Famicom, definitely. <laughs> what I like about those, some of them, of course, had those uh, controllers built in, but uh, mostly you could detach the controller, detach the power adapter, so you could really reuse it a lot, and that helped. That helped, really. And uh, the games, of course, yes. Uh, the games, they all usually came uh, in bundles, like 8 games, 21 games, 99999 games, yeah. and, uh, and uh, that was affordable. I could buy this cartridge. And here inside, without joke, there is a Prince of Persia, Contra, DuckTales 2, um, some other games I cannot uh, even pronounce, Mermaid, <laughs> and uh, yes, the pool game. So it's quite good. There is a, a Little Mermaid game, quite playable, uh, Contra game, and DuckTales 2, all it's in one selection. cartridge. Yeah. And it's these really were, good. These were fully backwards compatible with original Famicom cartridges, weren't they? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 what's great about them. Yeah. Definitely, they they were compatible, and uh, it was a it was a good price, and it gave possibility for many families. We didn't have any money at that point, so my mother is telling me that it was a really really hard time in Estonia until year two thousand two. Uh, our family was in in a really bad shape, and she had to work constantly day and night. I I never saw my mother; she was at work. My father got deported uh, to Russia. It's a long story, but the thing is that people didn't have money really. 
So those uh, fake uh, family clones gave us opportunity to at least play the games, mm -hmm. to see the games. Uh, I started playing uh, Dandy still on uh, black and white TV. So it was not because the TV was black and white. It's just because the Soviet TVs that we got uh, in our homes, they couldn't take the signal. So okay. you had to buy a, a converter or there was uh, some other way, but uh, mainly uh, many uh, Soviet TVs couldn't handle uh, the signal and, and the color. You, you just couldn't see the color. So uh, for a few first years, I thought that Mario is gray. And uh, I was playing the Mario game. It was in black and white and, and, and gray. And then after a few years, I was like, oh, my God, it has colors. <laughs> so... So that's a little bit about your history and the start of access to video gaming in your country. And I'm sure we'll learn a little bit more, but let's learn something about the museum there, Level Up. Is this a new museum or is this something that you've had open for some time? Uh, around two years at the moment, around mm -hmm. two years. So I would say it's still pretty young. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a young project. And for the first uh, half a year, it was uh, quite empty space. So um, the idea just came out of nowhere. I was working as a designer of study materials for schools, um, all those uh, study books of uh, Russian language. And uh, for three years I was doing those. And then one day I went to the exhibition of uh, retro video games that was made by uh, Camille Laurelli. He's an artist from uh, France. And he came to Estonia to uh, teach in art academy and at the same time he was doing exhibitions and one of those was connected with uh, retro video games that doesn't mean that he was really like crazy about video games it's just uh, he had a small collection he had a super nintendo he had an s and um and he wanted to show them to the people to the local people because majority of people here in estonia never really saw in reality a uh, super nintendo or a NES console in the beginning when we just uh, started opening the place, um, people really didn't get well, why it's needed mm -hmm. and what is a video game museum for for them, um, from the public. It was like, uh, what? So the, the main answer I always had from the people when I was talking about the idea of opening the video game museum is that um, so uh, it's like a kid's room where kids can play the games and you look after them or something like that. Like, what is that place? Why? why? It's a video game. Like, yeah, still trying to break not... through that barrier of video games yeah. for children. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's like, it's not art. It's not... We have a museum in Estonia of... Uh, uh of movies of cinema we we have a museum of music we have uh, all of those museums and no one is asking those museums why there is a museum of uh, yeah. of music or cinema like and there's a chimney there is that an old yes. chimney nice yes <laughs> wow so the U european union gave money uh to the artist union and they made this ceramic center here so that's why now it's uh so clean but before that when we just opened this was grass and the, there was a garbage everywhere this mm -hmm. was like a metal garbage it was totally abandoned this place but now it looks much cleaner and it helps us <laughs> mm -hmm. so that that's the entrance the the door is original we couldn't change it because it's very expensive to do so <laughs> and then uh, you come in and uh, here we have this um, um, cash machine it was at this exact factory at the entrance there was a shop they were producing a lot of ceramics and other stuff. So this is the original uh, machine and the TV was here uh, somewhere in the workers room. <laughs> so it's all authentic. Uh, we had amusement park in Estonia, but it got bankrupt. So in Estonia, we don't have amusement park. Right. The country is too small. It's only 1 million people. So we just can't physically have a, a working uh, amusement park at the moment. So those were in amusement park when I was a child and uh, I was riding them when I was like eight, <laughs> 10 years old. And now I have them here. Uh, here is the ZX Spectrum, uh, the, the newer model, the 128K one. So the tapes at some point started to break and we had to uh, put the tablet. Otherwise, we would lose all the original tapes. Mm. And I was pretty sad about that. So uh, there the, are some... Uh, the, sorry, before you go on, the ZX Spectrum, mm -hmm. um, it was quite a heavily cloned system in the Soviet era, wasn't it? Yeah. So you didn't have yes. those Sinclair machines originally. We, no, we had this. Ah, oh, there we go. You've got they, some. <laughs> tam, tam, yeah, I have those, uh, of course, because <laughs> it's 
Estonia. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, we had those and uh, we have more of them everywhere. Uh, I think we took them to the other space right now. But yes, those were all handmade usually. So people bought uh, parts and build them uh, in the design they like more. So do you choose to put the authentic Sinclair machines on display just because people wouldn't have got to use them before? It's just nice for them to try the real thing. Um, yeah, the the main reason why we use this one, because uh, of course we have uh, this ZX Spectrum here mm -hmm. working and uh, uh, ZX uh, 8, uh, 8i, 81? I forgot yeah. how, 81, <laughs> yes, yes, um, is that... Um, it's just it, this one is not so fragile. Sure. So the main reason why we use this one, because this one is uh, bigger, bulkier, and uh, it's not so fragile because people uh, use it. And um, it, it was easier for us to work with this model. That's the main reason. That's the only reason. And this was a, a handmade. Someone uh, made it by himself, and we just got it. Um, I have no idea from where it com it's coming, but it was quite funny to put it here. Because people were building those at home. To what play does some that games. do? What's that? Is that a joystick? Controller. That's a controller. Yeah, it's a joystick. <laughs> yeah, it's a controller. You see, and people played with that. And I've I've seen many of those uh, when people are giving their own uh, stuff from from them from their grandparents maybe even. Um, many have those. Wow. Because people were building their own controllers. Uh, they couldn't buy one. It was impossible, so they had to build them. God, that must have been quite painful to play games with. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Yes. And I noticed in the cabinet there, you also have some Nintendo Game Boy um, items. On yeah. Display. Yes. Yes. Now you wouldn't have had that then in 1989 no. in Estonia. Maybe, maybe some rich kids uh, with uh, parents that uh, with with the father that was working in um, a marine somewhere mm -hmm. in, uh, in the sea. Uh, yeah, they could buy it from. Um, you know, the, the 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 father would buy it somewhere from uh, from the country outside of Soviet Union, and illegally would uh, move it here to to Estonia in Soviet Estonia somehow. But uh, as I know from the stories, uh, only like few people had it and uh, yeah. like, like experienced it. For us, we had uh, those. Oh, these are the electronic uh, yes, game watch Yes, those are the electronic. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So we played those. So what? Just go through some of those because you mentioned there was the equivalent of Mario carrying some eggs. What what other games do Electronica do there? So uh, there were many different. Uh, this one is the eggs, uh, eggs, eggs, eggs. Yep. Uh, you know, um, I would say they would they took all of the main uh, game and watch um, uh, games that were for one screen uh, and uh, repli uh, made the replica of all of them. So um, all, all of those that had one screen, not two screens, right, uh, okay. all of those were uh, replicated mm -hmm. and uh, just the, um, uh, the image was changed. Yeah. So uh, I would say like that, yes. I cannot sure. uh, uh, be more specific at the moment. Okay. Yes. Okay. And of course, uh, almost uh, no one um, had or played ever Atari 2600. So for many people, this is the first time they see it in mm. real life. And uh, many even don't know that it, existed <laughs> yeah and how did you yes. how did you stay informed of uh, video game releases systems did you have access to you know you, i'm guessing you didn't have access to the same magazines as us but did you have magazines um, about gaming or not yes. really uh there was um, um in estonia not really but there was um i would say uh, one um, post-Soviet um, uh, magazine. Mm -hmm. um, I never saw it in my life, but uh, people from Russia say that it was quite uh, famous. Uh, there was one magazine, but in Estonia we had no magazines, uh, no advertisement, no nothing. So uh, we went to the market. We were looking at the box of the game, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that was all. Nice. Maybe the maybe you could uh, try the game before buy it, uh, buying it. Your video game world was really as wide as the local market and what you could see at the market. Um, yes. So I'm presuming then that there were no there was no such thing as an arcade. Um, there were a few, but it was very very expensive. And uh, well, I remember when was I was in school, I went to the arcades uh, maybe two times. 
but each time bullies uh, <laughs> uh, took <laughs> no. all of my money. Oh, yes. No. So, uh, <laughs> so that's why my experience with the arcades ended there. And I remember when I was already a bit uh, older and I went, uh, I don't know, it was third, fourth, fifth grade uh, in one of the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In one of the shops, there was a Simpsons arcade cabinet. Okay. It's quite famous, as I know. And, uh, well, well, then I finally played uh, some of that. But you yes. do you do now have arcades in your museum, don't you? So yes. what arcades yeah. do you have there? So right now, because of the second space, we took a lot of arcades there. Okay. And those authentic arcades that were made in uh, post-Soviet time in Estonia, they are in the second place. Uh, we ourselves remade them, rebuilded them, cleaned them, and they're working. It took us a lot of time because we are not experts. We had to uh, study it from scratch. So here right now in the museum still, we have uh, Virtua Fighter 3, Virtua Striker 2, and uh, House of the Dead 2. Okay. So yeah, they play the same. You just push the button and they play. Because of the situation in Estonia and the market and everything, uh, people at some point started building um, arcades from old casino machines. So this is a casino machine. Uh, from uh, 90s and okay. they rebuild it and inside now you can see a Tekken 2 game right so but that would have been a game of roulette or or poker and yes, they've drilled yes. in the the control yeah. panel and converted mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. and this was like uh, the majority of the arcades in Estonia I would say they looked like that okay so uh, not original box only the game is original but the outside is totally handmade something really really weird sometimes <laughs> yes so that's the, that's the story of the arcades uh yeah estonia because of the size and uh, tallinn is the capital is only four hundred thousand people so if, for such a small um i would say country and the city it's quite hard to make um arcade business sustainable mm -hmm. and uh when it was uh, post-soviet time when there was no work no salary nothing People were not thinking about uh, playing arcade games. They were yeah. thinking how to find food. Exactly. <laughs> so. exactly, yeah. yeah. And the choice of furniture, is the choice of furniture specifically to create an atmosphere to suit the era? Or is yes. it just whatever furniture you can get your hands on? <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, in the beginning, uh, in the beginning, it was uh, anything we could buy yeah. and find. But now uh, it's mostly connected with the era. So we really work on this now because we have possibilities to do that and a bit more money. So uh, this radio was built in uh, Riga, mm -hmm. in, um, in, in Soviet Riga. And uh, there are games and toys everywhere. They, made, they were made in Soviet times in Estonia on, uh, on the factory Norma. So they are connected with our history right now. And uh, the furnitures are mostly from that era. So the first room is 75 till 85 or something like that. So all the furnitures are from 80s Great. or uh, yeah. 70s. And they were rebuilt. They were cleaned. Uh, we've put inside all the LED uh, lightning to, to have a bit more light. But at the same time, you can see that all of the lights, they are uh, soft yellow. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are LED, but uh, with the color of the old uh, lamp. So... Uh, uh, we really work on the lights and uh, the best uh, time to visit the museum is uh, in the evening or in the winter uh, when it's dark. So all of the lights, everything is really, really like we, we really work on that, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that uh, the right place is lighted up, that there is enough light, but not too much light. And all of those lamps, like the lamp here, they were produced in Soviet Union and they were very famous ones. So when people go here, they see the lamp from their childhood. Yes. And uh, so even if they don't recognize the system that they're playing on, they're mm -hmm. still surrounded by things from their childhood that put yes. them in that era and give them that mm -hmm. nostalgic feeling. Yeah, mm -hmm. it works well. Yeah. So so like those um, cars here, there are many cars. Those are uh, all uh, Soviet uh, Soviet uh, machines mm -hmm. here or um, this uh, this uh, radio. It was um, um, it was used to usually with uh, Commodore or the X Spectrum uh, computers to load the games or programs. It was mostly used with this machine here, so it was uh, quite popular to use with the computers. Uh, you can see all the plugs that can go in. So um, uh, even if they have here right now like a box of Intel Vision that no one ever saw or even have no idea what is that or video pack that no one cares, uh, at the same time, uh, the furniture and the things around, 
are connected with their childhood or the history of Estonia. So that helps to connect them together. So it would, in television here, we have Electronica and Exivideo, those uh, Soviet consoles. So people kind of automatically assume that it's from the same time, from the same period. It, it, it's helping us yeah, really it gives it yes. context yeah um we did catch a glimpse a minute ago of you walking past your um awesome racing corner with the sit down racing games mm -hmm. and also you've got a display which i really like which is a gallery of those cloned consoles that you mentioned like the terminator console um yeah is that upstairs is that nearby can we have a quick look at that right now here uh they're just scattered uh, remaining so, so here is one then the junior, then uh, there is at games. This is a, uh, it's so bad. I think you know that I know this games, one. Uh, yes. Sega. Yeah. It's extremely bad. So we put it here um, to explain people why you should play the original, really. <laughs> so uh, there are those Mega Kid consoles. So it's a dandy with a keyboard and uh, educational programs. Uh, those were produced with the educational cartridges. Then there is a Terminator that I told you. This is the one that I played okay. in my childhood. So that looks and a little bit like, um, it looks a bit like a Mega Drive, a bit like a Turbo Graphics. It looks a bit like every other yeah. console, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the new box that they use. Okay. Uh, and that that's one the old one that I had in my childhood. That so one, you say yes. the new box. Can you still go out and buy this at the market today? Yes, yes, you can go to the market. You can buy it in Estonia right now. You can go to any shop and they sell them. Fantastic. Of course, they are still sold. So uh, that's um, that's the ones that you can buy now, the new uh, cartridges that are sold in the shop right now. And uh, those are the old ones mm -hmm. that are uh, more historical. Uh, you can see the uh, 96. Uh, this one, this one was packed in all uh, with every console usually. Okay. This was so, uh, the the pack in. Am mm -hmm. I seeing this right? Are the older ones slightly taller and the newer ones slightly shorter? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, economy of uh, plastic, I would say. <laughs> but uh, even the old ones sometimes had the same uh, uh, Famicom. Like this one is the old one. Yes. But the quality of plastic is different, and you can really feel it with the image with the. Um, uh, with the quality of the image, uh, which one is the old one, which one is the new one. Yeah. And uh, this is another Terminator, but now it's called GK500, GK <laughs> and it's a Street Fighter, Street Fighter 3. Street Fighter 3, wow. <laughs> not connected in any way with it, but... <laughs> and uh, <laughs> why not? Oh, this is the, I would say, authentic box from the Dandy that was in from those times, from uh, 95. Here it is. Yeah. It looks I love, really I love close that you're using the word authentic and yeah. But the thing is, I'm looking at these and thinking these are cloned systems. But many of your visitors will look at these, and this is their childhood. This is nostalgia yes. to them. These are these are the authentic thing to them. That's the thing. They the, most of the people coming here, like local people, they really don't care about uh, uh, Sega Mega CD or mm. uh, Dreamcast or any of those. They are caring about this console here, the Denzi one. And uh, it's quite interesting to explain them that uh, this Boogerman is not original <laughs> or uh, this Mario 6 is not original. Your childhood was a lie. <laughs> yes. Uh, so... They don't care about that, no, really. They don't. They don't. They, they just. Yeah. Have so fun, here yeah. is the Uranus one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that a light gun with that one? Yeah. Usually, all of them had a gun. Right. So okay. it was always sold with the gun. Uh, it, it was always advertised like, "Oh, this one has a gun." Yeah. So there is a PlayStation 4 Pro there, and the computer with old games, and the Kinect. Yeah. And, now yeah, we have the computer you mentioned there. So you do have yeah. one Windows XP computer. Yeah. Um, was PC gaming popular? I'm guessing PC gaming was way too expensive. Uh, yeah, it was quite expensive. Yeah. But of course, uh, if, if there was a possibility to have uh, money for the computer, it was popular. And there were clubs. Ah, yes, I remember now. When I was a child, I was going to the cinema. And in the cinema, in the, uh, in the basement of the cinema, there was always a computer club. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was going to school, I was playing the hottest game at that point. It was Harry Potter. Uh, the first <laughs> Harry Potter game. This was like uh, the the graphics was so advanced that uh, uh, the computers that we had in uh, in uh, not like in the school but uh, you know like additional education uh, school. Yes. Um, they couldn't handle such uh, graphics 
as a first Harry Potter game. So I had to go there and pay a lot of money to play that uh, <laughs> masterpiece. So yeah, really, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I'm quite jealous that I can't be there in person because it does look like a wonderful museum to walk around and a lot of fun. A uh, very hands-on museum, which is fantastic. Where can people go if they want to find out more about the museum? Um, so, uh, first of all, we, we're trying really uh, to be active on uh, social media. And uh, right now on the back, there is a Final Fantasy game playing. <laughs> I can hear it constantly. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, uh, the Facebook is the most uh, active place right now for us. Um, and um, uh, if something's happening, we almost each day have some kind of post that we got this, we, we found that, we changed the furniture, this happened. So we are very like open. Uh, we don't have the, those like official posts. It's more like, hey friends, we we made this. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, very soon we will have a concert of acoustic guitar in the museum. Why not? Like yeah. the place is open. We have seminars, events. Uh, we're really open for crazy, crazy ideas here. So um, Facebook, then on Instagram, of course, I'm posting uh, beautiful pictures. And uh, so, yeah, it's everywhere. Uh, but mostly I would say, yes, uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube now, because we're really posting some stuff there constantly. And uh, on the website level up, uh, you can just check the place and uh, see some information. But the website is very basic. Uh, prices, uh, pictures, and um, a yeah. bit of story. Yes, because... Um, all of that stuff is managed by uh, two people and five volunteers. So sure. I'm just, I'm too tired to update the website. Well, I'll make sure that there's links to all of your social media and your mm -hmm. Patreon uh, in the video description. So I would encourage people to go and click on them, give them a follow if you really want to become a Patreon. And um, perhaps you'll learn a bit more about these clones. And I'm really interested in following you to see the clone machines and learning a bit more about Estonian computer history. Was there ever an Estonian microcomputer specifically made in Estonia that you know of? Uh, I remember that in Estonia, there was one computer right there. Uh, it's named Krista. It was made in, uh, in Soviet times in Estonia. Right. And there was a quite popular computer made. It was called Yuku. Uh, so we had computers built in, in Estonia here. Right. I'd like to see some pictures of them on your, on your Instagram and on your Facebook. So uh, I'll okay. look out for those. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for your time and, and good luck with your museum. Thank you. Thank you. If you've enjoyed today's video and what I do here in general, then consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash retro man cave, where a small contribution will give you access to all videos one week early without any adverts. But most importantly, you'll become an official cave dweller. I hope to see you there and thank you.